Do dinosaurs still roam hidden parts of the earth? Why do dogs smell like that when they're wet? Answers to these questions and more on this episode of This Paranormal Life! Hello! Hey! And welcome back to This Paranormal Life, the weekly comedy podcast where every Tuesday you're joined by me, Kit Krumo Vena, this guy sitting across from me, Mr. Rory Pars. Hey! And we dive into a different paranormal case, deciding by the end of the episode whether it's real or not. Rory, how are you doing today? Great. Big questions right off the bat. What did you say? Do dinosaurs still live inside of the earth? <laughs> Whoa. Well, sorry, you've been e- eating edibles or something. I said, are they just on earth, full stop, somewhere hidden? You're saying inside ah. the earth, which well, I do like. If they got to go somewhere, you know, if I looked up at the sky and saw a giant meteorite coming straight at me, I'd go downstairs. <laughs> I'd go in a hole. Downstairs. That's where I'd go. <laughs> yeah. Into the earth, into the ground. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the closest is we've investigated to downstairs. Um, mm-hmm. Probably recently, the Paris catacombs, those went pretty far down. Yeah. I think if a meteorite was coming and I saw it, I'd be like one of those birds that just buries its head in the sand. <laughs> its body is still completely visible, but I think I'm safe. There's a lot to be said for that. There really is. The feeling of safety before inevitable destruction. Secondly, why do dogs smell like that? I don't know. I've never had a dog before, so I don't know specifically what smell you're talking about. You're, you count your lucky stars, bro, because <laughs> you so much as get a sprinkling of Evian near a dog, and it's like you un- unleashed a dirty bomb, a kind of Fukushima-level outpouring of gas. Wash your dog. Wash your dog more, I think, is the answer to that question. They do smell mysteriously bad. Uh, dog owners will know... Um, Rory, we actually, of course, aren't here to talk about either of those things, ultimately. As you know, for us paranormal investigators, and for paranormal enthusiasts around the world, like our listeners, there are certain words that will always captivate and terrify us for what they represent. Mm -hmm. Roswell, Sasquatch, Enfield, deodorant. Right. Or more relevant to today, Loch Ness. For hundreds of years, this murky lake in Scotland has represented the unknown and the paranormal. The Loch Ness Monster, or Nessie, is arguably the world's most famous cryptid. And back in 2017, just five episodes into a new podcast called This Paranormal Life, an apparently pre-puberty kitten Rory decided the Loch Ness Monster was a double yes. Laying down history, even if our voices were so high, only dogs could hear the conclusion. Yeah, I think I'm going to go yes. That's a double yes. Yeah. Wow, the, the bar was low back then. <laughs> I think we recently did an episode of this podcast where I had to, pr- just to get it a double yes, I had to provide 88 pages of declassified military documents, witness testimonies, audio recordings from witnesses, and newspaper cuttings from 1967. And at the end, it was still a coin toss as to which way it would go. Evidence inflation. Back then, one page of evidence is worth 88 today. Right. Uh, It's a good question. I will say it surprised me looking back at that conclusion. Um, But there is something to Loch Ness. And I don't want to be revising history right now. I'm trying to use the fact that Loch Ness is real as a lever for today's investigation. Okay. Because... Saying that Loch Ness really does have a monster is cool and all, but it actually raises way more questions than answers because if Nessie is real, there could be others, right? Mm, True, yeah. Others in similar places, even. We should know because we grew up somewhere pretty damn similar. Remember, uh, we grew up only, I checked, 250 miles as the crow flies away from Loch Ness. Ireland is full of murky lakes, even bigger ones than Loch Ness. Is it possible that creatures like Nessie are hiding there right now? I see, I see. So proving the existence of one of these creatures, or at least saying one of these exists, implies that there could be others, and there could be some right on our doorstep. You know, I don't remember how we said Nessie existed. If I had to guess, we probably favoured the kind of um, prehistoric survivor hypothesis. This was more likely to be something like a dinosaur, some kind of ancient creature that survived rather than a magic Sasquatch or something. Uh, Who's to say, ladies and gentlemen, that these creatures are even confined to a lake? I think we need to storm Buckingham Palace, the White House, all buildings of significant importance, 
and grab Not anyone that looks like no. a snake. Just start grabbing people by the neck. All right, well, if we're going to start walking into the White House grabbing snakes, uh, there's going to be no one <laughs> left in the White House. Am I right, guys? <laughs> hey! Ayo! Right. <laughs> Also, people went to jail for a long time for storming the White House <laughs> or storming Capitol Hill. So That's let's right. not let's not do that. I did forget that. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. We're going to reveal how this isn't just stoner chat, but a deep and crazy history on the Emerald Isle with witnesses, scientific research, and maybe, if you're lucky, evidence. Brother, if it's about the paranormal, it's boner chat, because I'm excited. <laughs> Rory, are you ready? I think we both, I think I've established I am. Let's dive in. We are in the southwest of Ireland in Killarney National Park, filled with valleys and lakes, specifically Muckross Lake. Well, sorry, one more time? Muckross Lake. Muckross? More of a Muckross. Muckross. Like if, a, if an Irish person lost their crucifix and they'd say, ha, Muckross. All right, that's a kind of... <laughs> That's incredibly insensitive to this. This is how right. I mentally kind of remember things. So. We have Irish listeners. Yeah, sure, not many. I don't know why. They just shun us for some general <laughs> yeah. reason. Always have, always will. Not even in the top 10 listener destinations, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but there's some. Which is wild because we are both Irish as well. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, they kind of, they seem to have disowned us. But we don't want to piss them off any further, all okay. right? Because we didn't win big at the Irish Podcast Awards We last were nominated year. for quite a few awards. Yeah, but I think we can win big if we really nail this one. Okay. I'm not all saying right. that's the only reason I'm looking into this absolute pile of horse shit that is today's case, <laughs> but... <laughs> oh, sorry, these things still on. Um, yeah, let's cut that, please. You're just going to have to grin and bear this episode, brother, because we need some more Irish stories in the, in the podcast. All right. Okay, I'm here for it. All right. Well, hey, guys. Hey, so, welcome back. Oh, we're in Muckross. Hey, my favorite lake. Oh, yeah. I love this one. Muckross. And I, I remember it because I respect it. <laughs> Not through wordplay. It's 2009, and John Downs has traveled from his home in England to Killarney to investigate the lakes. Get that f out of here, am I right? <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, we got we got a lot of English <laughs> listeners, brother. You said to pander to the Irish ones. Yeah, not not that, <laughs> not in a violent way. Listen, I know they do. Who, we have to appease and everyone. I can see the live numbers, and they are ticking up because our oh. Irish people love that. But we have way more English listeners than oh, Irish shit. listeners. Oh so, shit! And the brother, the British Podcast Awards are also coming up. So, oh. w- which we didn't even get nominated for last year. I. Think. Me. So we are between a rock and a goddamn hard place. Okay. To, all right. Don't so just. <laughs> Ugh, okay. All right. I'll try and not piss anyone off. I'm like the story goes on. Rory's like foreigners out. Am I right? <laughs> Britain and Ireland is the place to be. <laughs> okay. An Englishman who we love is visiting Ireland, the place we love, in a respectful way, in a great way. John isn't your average tourist. He's the founder of the Centre for Fortean Zoology the CFZ. I believe we've come across these guys before. Yep. They've been around a long time. They self-describe as having investigated cryptids on five different continents, calling themselves the leading non-profit organization dedicated to finding and studying unknown or mystery animals. Mystery animals, I'm pretty sure I saw them in 2006 uh, when I took acid at that rave in Belfast. But uh, they did a sick set. They had a great keyboard player at the time. Fun fact, for the first two years, uh, this podcast was also non-profit, because then make a f***ing penny. Well, after a day of driving around the Ring of Kerry, John, his wife, and two fellow investigators stopped on a hill overlooking Macross Lake. I understand this is just Ireland only 15 years ago, but I am fully picturing Jurassic Park. Four investigators, open-top jeep, driving through thick rainforest. Oh yeah. They peered down into the valley, the subject of all their investigations and where there had been word of movement on the lake. Just then, they saw some strange movements just below the surface of the water. It seemed to be some kind of large animal. Rory, thank God, John was carrying a camera at the time. It starts off slowly as John notices birds and small objects on the lake but soon it becomes more interesting. And here you can see something swimming slowly but surely across the water. It's far too big to be a duck. And in fact, if you look closely, you'll see that there's nothing above the water. It's something just under the surface. 
The whole thing is very reminiscent of the pictures which made the newspapers a couple of years ago when somebody took photographs of what appears to be an immense creature swimming across Lake Windermere. And could this be that uber predator? Just look at the way it's moving. It's far too big to be any known species of animal that should live in that lake. As you can see, Rory, John's group were pretty far from this lake, about a quarter mile, just for reference. Yeah. So anything they're seeing, as he points out, had to be pretty big. But the moment we care most about is six and a half minutes into this tape. Look at this. You can see something large and dark and they're very, very fast, moving like a torpedo and leaving something like a torpedo trail in its wake as it zooms right towards us and then bears to the right. I've never seen anything like this before in my life, and it's difficult to know how to explain it. All right, for those listening, there's some kind of commotion-y waves on the surface of the water, and then something, some kind of object. It's hard to tell whether it's either above the water or below the water. It creates kind of like a bend pattern as it turns along. Yeah, it, it does look quite a lot like in some kind of thriller movie or war movie when they do, as he said, launch a torpedo yeah. and, and it kind of like very quickly just shoots out under the water and curves around in a nice pattern. I can't stress how hard it is to comprehend what's happening because for some reason they decided to stand a mile away <laughs> and then zoom in <laughs> as close as they could. Because at the start of this video, at one point, they're like showing the lake and this thing is shaking like crazy because it's <laughs> zoomed in like a hundred times. And I was like, oh, that must be, those ripples must be, like, I can see a boat there on the lake. Yeah. And he was like, that is a duck. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know what the f*** is going on then. <laughs> Perspective is really wild right now. Yeah. So even in this part where we see this kind of pattern, it's very hard to tell whether that could be an enormous sea beast or a pigeon. Yeah, well, it ain't, a bit, it ain't a bit. I mean, hopefully that's the point of showing you the bit before, right, is because we generally know from watching the beginning you see smaller things on the lake. You see whether it is a bird or a duck or whatever. And then we see a few minutes later something considerably bigger. Different, Going sure. underneath the water. And yeah, it is funny. I mean, thankfully he caught that bit, the important bit on camera, because right before that, they see something, uh, what they think is crazy. And he starts, this is full clover field, the camera. He's so excited, he starts swinging the camera around. It's insane. Which is... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's paranormal evidence 101, isn't it? Uh, sadly, it's like it's like all footage of natural disasters on uh, Twitter or places like that. It's always like, you know, you get a glimpse of a tsunami and then the camera is just... Just the floor. It, it's doing a 900 like Tony Hawk, just <laughs> impossible to see what's going on. Uh, one thing I want viewers to bear in mind, as we proceed, though, through this case, when we talk about the Great Lakes and the sprawling hills of Ireland, I think a lot of people probably including myself, pictured quite a large body of water, which, if that is the lake in question today, it is not a large body of water. I mean, it is and it isn't. It is a lake, and it, it's sizable, but it's not like, I can't see the other side. It blends into the mountain tops. <laughs> it, you could swim it. It ain't Lake Michigan. You, yeah, you could no. just swim across this thing. I mean, here, here's, here's a good uh, example. Uh, here you could see that Muckross Lake is, you know, it's large, as mm -hmm. you can see, in relation to the towns and mountain ranges, but it is also connected to Loch Lean, which is a lot bigger. So kind of one and the same in, in some ways. Yeah. Okay. So Rory, yes, while it's not the biggest lake in Ireland, it is one of them, uh, it is deep. It's about 250 feet deep. Wow, that is actually deeper than I thought. An interesting place to start with some fascinating yet incredibly shaky footage. You know, maybe this case is better known than we thought because that video has over half a million views. Whoa! And lots of comments from paranormal enthusiasts and is a key piece of evidence today. But why were they looking for a cryptid there in the first place? Well, it so happens that these lakes have long been associated with underwater monsters local lore, anecdotal sightings, and myths have thrived in communities around these shorelines for generations. Locals have started calling the beast that lives in the lake, Mucky. That's kind of a cute name for a seemingly ferocious monster. Most sightings described a very large eel or snake-like animal 
that moves quickly and occasionally breaks the surface. Some descriptions include fins a bit like the plesiosaurus, which is a bit more like Nessie. Mm. Uh, I needed a little bit of a reminder uh, of what the plesiosaurus looks like, if it is supposed to be what Nessie looks like. It's this guy. Whoa. Okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's Nessie, all right. He's got the diplodocus neck and head attached to kind of like a turtle's body. That's that's what the look we're going for here. I actually tweeted this last night that I got I got pretty freaked out at midnight googling dinosaurs. Hadn't looked at dinosaurs in a while. It's a slippery slope, dude. You, you, yeah, it's crazy. It's one of those. I know this is, and I cannot stress how much I don't smoke weed. But this, <laughs> but this is a very. It can only be described as like a very like stoner thought whenever you're like it's like i get it that they existed we all get it yeah but whenever you really think about that whenever you really think about it and you look at the dates of when they lived and then you start thinking about how long ago that was about him being alive 208 million years ago it's terrifying at midnight last night i wasn't okay with that (laughs) I, i i was recently at a kind of ecological park it was talking about kind of the history of the world, um, you know, uh, the environment, all that kind of stuff. And they were talking about some of the, uh, what do they call, extinction events that have taken place in the past. Sure. And I kind of waltzed by it and I was like, yeah, 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 no, I get it. The dinosaurs, <laughs> the meteorite, the whole deal. And they're like, yeah, that's one of eight. Mm. There were like, I don't know, five or six global extinction events before it even reached the dinosaurs. <laughs> they were like, there was the reckoning, there was the damning, <laughs> there was the bloodening. But you're like, Jesus Christ, what was going on on the earth when before the dinosaurs were kicking about? Because even the dinosaurs, it was like, I don't know, whatever, a certain percentage of earth's life was uh, yeah. wiped off the planet. Some of the ones that came before the dinosaurs, they were like, there was one dude left. <laughs> one dude and a and squirrel and they had to make it work it's like everything was gone it's crazy getting back to mucky and nessie the problem is rory if nessie has taught us anything it's that aquatic monsters are very hard to spot and very hard to get evidence of very true but i think with john's video we're off to a rolling start rest assured it's not the only proof of something big in the water in april 2003 Fish scientists were conducting hydroacoustic sonar scans of the lake to check the fish population. And just to clarify, this is a human scientist that evaluates fish, <laughs> not a fish scientist. Hold up. Oh, <laughs> shit. It was Aquaman. <laughs> uh, human scientists checking fish populations. Right. This is boring stuff. These guys aren't quacks. These guys are just regular researchers. They're not quacks because they're not ducks and they're not fish. <laughs> yeah, they're humans. Say, that's a different scientist. Those are the duck guys. They're the quacks. And Rory, they detected more than they bargained for. Something was getting in the way of their readings. Something big. In the southeastern corner of the lake, they detected a 27-foot snake-like shape that baffled the team. Writing. We have been unable to identify exactly what this image is, but we know it was not a computer or logging error, as all the gear was functioning normally. The story caused a wave of interest and speculation and was picked up in news outlets as far as Japan. Maybe the first story that made Mucky nationally famous. Wow. I was going to say, you know, maybe a little bit strange that Mucky is so relevant in Japan, of all places, but... As a country that is, uh, you know, one of their famous fictional characters is a monster that came from the ocean. Uh, <laughs> maybe they're just pretty keen to figure out if any of them are real. You right. Know? These scientists, they get back to the office. They're like, this is crazy, bro. We got to tell someone about this. The colleague's like, hey, Sean, um, Shinzo Abe is on the line. <laughs> huh? The prime minister of Japan is on the line. <laughs> He's like, are you sure it's not Godzilla? Just double check. Just like... <laughs> We know their movies and stuff, but like between you and me, we <laughs> some of them look pretty just real, movies, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first two Godzilla movies were actually leaked CIA <laughs> video files. <laughs> uh, I like that. I like that connection. Mm. Uh, and you know, Japan, another nation um, fascinated with its own folklore. But yeah, I mean, 
uh, a water beast is pretty much the modern mascot of the country. Yeah. We should be clear at this point. This is crossed over, right? We've gone from eyewitness testimony, rumors, legend, lore of stuff in this lake to sure it was ramped up a notch. Guys with experience of Loch Ness started looking into it uh, and maybe saw some stuff on camera. Maybe, maybe not. It should be pointed out. It's entirely feasible that there is an undiscovered beast in this lake. It doesn't have to be shape-shifting or magic or anything like, you know, invisible Sasquatch. Because uh, like I said, this thing is up to 250 feet deep. Is it possible we're dealing with a cut-off prehistoric animal? A creature that was supposed to be killed off with the dinosaurs, but it didn't get the memo, and it's living its best life to this day. That is the popular kind of theory anytime we're talking about swamp, not swamp monsters, sea serpents, anything like that. It's an old dinosaur that uh, is missed its expiry date and is still on the shelves. The only problem with that is, you know, that recent sighting, you said, when was that, 2003? Mm -hmm. That is very recent. That is only 20 years ago. That is at a point where we're entering a territory where people have very high definition cameras uh, and also equipment, whether you're a human scientist or a fish scientist, where you should be able to capture whatever it is that is down there if you're seeing it. You know, these aren't sightings from the 1940s or earlier. They did capture it on a scan. What does that mean? That means something's down there. <laughs> no, no, no. What does that mean? They captured it on a scan. They, they saw a 27 foot long beast. They saw it. On a scan. What is a scan? What do you mean? An X-ray? Uh, yeah, sonar? like a sonar, yeah. So they saw it on sonar. <laughs> yeah, the second one you said. <laughs> that one. An X-ray? Yeah. Sonar? Yeah. <laughs> they did. How do you see 20 feet on sonar? I believe it's dots, right? <laughs> yeah, well, there's a, there's a, they've got a scale. There's a scan. They've got a scale, don't they? Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, you don't believe in scientists? You don't believe in Sean the scientist? I just want to take that into consideration. I want everyone to take that into consideration. That this isn't... That going forward, you it's need... It's not the 1500s. You need... Uh, We're talking about 20 years ago. Hey, I'm, this was the problem with Loch Ness too, right? Was all the photos of Loch Ness were garbaggio. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Of not Loch Ness, but Nessie the monster. Uh, and, and I mean, I think with Loch Ness, they have got into all that. And in that sense, has our verdict aged like milk? Because there should be... A hundred 4K GoPros set up around the lake at all times, live streaming so that anyone on earth can just see it when it pops out. There should be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't even tell you how many sea serpent like cryptids we've investigated on this podcast before. You know, um, as you said, the Loch Ness Monster, the sea serpent of Lake Koshkonong, the Ogopogo. God, there's probably so many more that I can't remember. Uh, the Lake Michigan Sea Serpent. I think we did that one at a live show uh, when we were in Chicago. There's there's just so many out there. Unfortunately, very often it does come down to a no because uh, this is the problem. Is You know, when we're talking about cryptids that live in the forest, in the jungle, you know what else can live and breathe in the jungle? Humans. So it's pretty easy to look in the jungle and walk through the jungle and find the thing. Mm -hmm. We can't breathe underwater. We can't even really see underwater. So as soon as that thing goes down, it's gone. It's, it's disappeared into darkness, the mist of the earth. And that becomes a big problem. I agree. Because it's very hard to see. The problem is you f***ed up and mentioned the Ogopogo. And unfortunately I, I for you, knew that the is real. I mentioned that is the real. Ogopogo. And we gave that a, a yes, even though we didn't have to, really did. on a bonus episode. So if you haven't heard that episode, you have to go listen to that episode uh, if you want to hear about a real... <laughs> you know, I'm not saying this one isn't real, but if you want to hear about a real <laughs> sea serpent that we already gave a double yes, that is one on the Patreon. The Ogopogo episode was fantastic because the entire time I was saying it was a no. Yeah. Right up until the last minute and Kit said, well, if you don't believe me, here's a video of it. And he just showed me a video of the Ogopogo and I was like, all right, that's a yes. And Rory, it was shouldn't that be the lesson? Is that imagine, imagine if that video had never been taken. We had to wait all those years of people theorizing about the Ogopogo, talking about the Ogopogo, and then we just took some lucky son of a bitch to point their flip cam at the lake to capture it. And maybe that's what we're waiting on here. That's true. But until that day arrives, my verdict may be a no. You don't know what's coming. I'm excited. 
Um, I do want to support the the idea of this um, cut off prehistoric animal theory by saying that this lake is actually already home to one species of fish that doesn't exist anywhere else on Earth. No way! It got cut off during the Ice Age and survived when all the others died. Shut up! That's crazy! So it's already happening. Rory, what we do know is that Mucky in Muckross Lake is far from the only sighting of a water beast in Ireland across the years. There are several major lakes with supposed cryptids spotted in them. From Loch Derg to Loch Ree to Loch Anna and more. But there's one loch that really piqued my interest. I became tantalized when I found out about Loch Fada and the rumors surrounding a beast that may live inside the lake. My interest was piqued because we have video testimony of a sighting. Is there a loch that doesn't have a sea monster in it? <laughs> yes. In Ireland? Because yes. you just rattled off like 14 different locks. <laughs> I think ironically, uh, you know, I don't know if everyone knows this, but our biggest, the biggest lake in the country. <laughs> You're like, our, biggest, our biggest export <laughs> is, is snake meat. <laughs> From from Ireland. Fun fact. You know the way St. Patrick drove out all snakes? Where do you think they went, bitch? <laughs> the water. Not everyone knows because Loch Ness is so famous. Right. Our biggest uh, loch, our biggest lake, is Loch Ney. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And actually, before anyone is like, shut up, you guys don't have a Loch Ney. It's the biggest lake in Britain, in Britain and Ireland, in all of England, all of Scotland, all of Wales, all of Ireland. That's the biggest one. Really? Yeah, it's massive. And it's it's been in the news because it's poison now. Okay, great. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, fantastic. But funnily enough, I mean, after all the chats, there's been a lot of Loch Ney news in the last year, and it is massive, and it's well known. Da da da. I don't think there's any. I mean, I might be wrong. I might be wrong, but I don't think there's actually any rumors of our biggest lake having anything in it. Which is disappointing because that's that's probably the one that you just don't want to be poisoned. Right. If there's sea monsters in every other lock on that island, poison those ones. I mean, poison those and let them float to the top. And unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, Loch Ness, the big one, is where all our drinking water comes from. So it being poison is bad. Do I want to know how it has become poison? I think farmers just dump like cow shit into it. That's what I was I worried think about. That's yeah. what it is. Okay. I, th I think they've been doing that for a hundred years, and now it's poison. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be Ireland's next extinction event <laughs> we all drank cow shit and died yeah I don't know if anyone's been paying attention to like UK news over the last two years but there's shit in all the water <laughs> it turns out it's bad kind of I think like a couple of years back um, our kind of government of the UK kind of said it was okay to dump shit in water and then everyone started doing it and no, it's bad. What a fun little time to be alive. <laughs> to put to put poop in the one thing we need to live. <laughs> That's great. That's cool. <laughs> Rory, let's cut to that video testimony. As it came towards us, it suddenly opened its mouth, which opened something similar to a shark-shaped mouth. And we did notice the body had all movement in it. And in color, it seemed a kind of a bluey black shade. And it came right up along until suddenly I moved. And when I did, the others jumped as well as I did. So then it suddenly just took fright and went right around a rock, which is still there at the point, if you notice it further, and went down. We could see the movement in the water as it went down. And very quickly again it came up, but it was quite a long distance from us when it did come up. It had moved much quicker going out than it had coming towards us. And what did you think it was when you saw it, Miss Morgan? I had never seen anything like it before in my life. Uh, I had seen sharks and seals and a whale, but I had never seen anything like this. And what did you think it was when you saw it? I couldn't put a name on it. As always, it's pretty interesting, isn't it? Whenever you finally have to hear someone actually say what they saw and you're like, yeah, wouldn't really know what to say to you 
if you told me that to my face. I, I, I may have missed this. Did we tell the audience that this video clip was from the 1800s? <laughs> no, it's from 1967. It is not from 1967. Those people look like they rode into the interview on a penny farthing. <laughs> Listen, Ireland was a different place at the time. That is insane. I say that. If you went to rural Ireland, that kind of is what it looks like. I, even if you pointed an iPhone 15 Pro <laughs> Max, it would still be black and white. <laughs> the audio would still sound like that. That's what TikToks from Killarney <laughs> look like right now. That is, wow, I would have assumed that was from the literal 1940s <laughs> or something. That is really old school. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit, yeah. Uh, okay, well, look, hey, good to hear a testimony. Not entirely sure that... Two elderly women, kind of claiming they saw a strange fish. Elderly? They were 28 years old. <laughs> they definitely weren't. <laughs> I bet they weren't that old. One of them is chewing Werther's Originals while knitting mid-interview. Um, okay, but good to get some testimonies from just witnesses, normal people. Did Granted, you wake up on the wrong side of the bed? <laughs> you're, you, you're, you're poking holes in everything. You're poking holes in everything. You can't, you can't simply just enjoy a story. Sorry. Also to clarify, this isn't even about the lake we're talking about. They're, they're talking about a different lake. A nearby lake. <laughs> so, not, so not even... This is a testimony from 70 years ago by two women who are talking about a different lake. <laughs> a nearby lake. A nearby lake. And this is all going to become clear. <laughs> Very soon, okay. why okay. I'm talking about a different lake. <laughs> Don't you think it would be a little bit interesting if you were investigating the Loch Ness Monster? And Imagine you, you've got all your f cameras set up on Loch Ness yeah. and you're investigating it, you're all, all chips in on Loch Ness. And then some guy's like, hey, yo, they just saw the same beast in a different lake five minutes away. Are you going to be like, yeah, I think I'm good. I'm staring at the, the lake where there's nothing going on right now. Or would you be like, nice, he, maybe he got there somehow. I'm going to go and see. Oh, I see. So you're implying it's the same creature, but he has gotten to a different lake? Maybe it's cousin or something. Okay, so it's not the same creature. We don't know. <laughs> okay. We're just trying to understand. Well, the same species, <laughs> okay. for sure. Okay, but these lakes aren't connected unless this thing did like did like a... Um, free Willy style leap across Ireland and landed in the other pond. This is not the same creature we're saying. What happened next <laughs> was asking. exactly what I wanted to happen in TPL style. Some of the team from Loch Ness and its Phenomena Investigation Bureau got wind of what was going on at Loch Fada. They came over to investigate it, headed up by decorated British Army Captain Lionel Leslie. He was a World War II hero and wrote books on big game hunting, but it was hunting cryptids that excited him most. He arrived in 1965 with a glint in his eye and a plan, aka dynamite. I knew this was coming. Captain Leslie first came here to investigate the monster report in 1965, and for him, this is a serious business. <laughs> He's lowering dynamite into monster. the lake. <laughs> is that what He's that is? He's a member of the Loch Ness Phenomena Investigation Bureau, and has spent five years on the so far inconclusive search for the monster that's said to live in the deeps of that somber Scottish loch. The idea was to blast <laughs> the monster here with noise and make him rise to the surface. <laughs> But nothing happened. So this year he's back again. Across the narrowest section of the loch, he's stretched a strong net, baited with rotten meat, into which he hopes to attract the monster from the depths. I was looking at your implementation here, Captain. I, I wonder, it's not very sophisticated looking. What chance of success do you think it has? Well, I've been assured by experts who've been employed on anti-submarine devices during the war that uh, instruments like this have been sufficient to put off a, a acoustic mine. You see, underwater, any form of noise or vibration is five times as intense as in air. And I believe that by uh, making these noises in the deeper parts of the lock, we could uh, manage to get these things on the move. At any rate, it's an experiment. E even, even though it's just sort of tin cans with stones in Tin it. cans <laughs> with... The idea is to catch it 
capture it and bring it ashore. Capture it and bring it into shallow water, keep it alive as long as possible for zoologists to examine it and film to be made of it. Does this mean then that you're a one-man band, as it were? Well, no, the Loch Ness Phenomena Investigation Bureau are very interested and uh, are giving us their moral support. The net is being paid for uh, by well-wishers. This is the first effort that, in history that anybody has tried to set out with a net to catch anything. The idea is to catch it, capture it, and bring it ashore. Capture it and bring it into shallow water, keep it alive as long as possible for zoologists <laughs> to examine it and so kill it to be made of it. Is, it. is it an expensive business, monster hunting? Well, it is if you go in for any length of time. Um, but uh, we take it uh, as a sort of glorified holiday at Boston expense. What <laughs> do you say then at this stage? Uh, don't let Boston hear this. You're likely to see or catch anything. I wouldn't like to prophesy anything. Uh, it's a gamble. And unless I have beginner's luck, there's nothing likely to happen. But somebody's got to break the ice. And we're breaking the ice. And once you've made the pioneer effort, uh, something else will follow in after year. <laughs> I do love that he kind of broke after a few minutes of interviewing and said that it was all a big holiday at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that interviewer was really not having it. He was like, your net is made of tin cans full of rocks. Yeah, he's like, how was um, your adventures in Loch Ness where you found nothing? <laughs> and he's like, no, we found, we, we made progress. It's like, cool, cool. Do you think you'll find anything here? Yes, obviously. But unfortunately, Rory, as we heard from the video, he was unsuccessful in capturing the beast, probably because he blew it to smithereens a year earlier by dropping dynamite in the lake. Yeah, I don't like this guy. That's incredibly irresponsible, <laughs> damaging to the local wildlife. Yeah. You I'm know, because we could all find the Loch Ness Monster if we really wanted to. We just drop a big toaster in the lake. <laughs> and that thing would float to the top. But we yeah. don't because there's rules, there's regulations, and there's the right way to do things. I guarantee someone's done that. That We've seen that there's enough crackpots uh, who live by the lake and all that stuff. Someone's definitely sneakily gone down with a toaster <laughs> and just chucked it in. Yeah, I, I know, I don't I don't know that I, I mean, I do understand it was a different time. We're, as you say, we're getting up on uh, whatever, 60, 70 years ago now that this was happening, but I don't know that I totally agree with his methods throwing in a bomb uh, right. and then trying to capture it with a net. And then <laughs> I'm glad the interviewer asked, he said, what do you plan to do once you get it? And he was like, probably show it around like King Kong for a while. Yeah. Hopefully keep it alive for as long as possible. But honestly, we'll probably eat it for dinner. We'll take a couple pictures and then <laughs> eat it. Yeah. <laughs> and Rory, that's why cryptid hunting has gone woke because people want Good. to protect wildlife now. Good, when, yeah. When, <laughs> when it used to be all about killing them as soon as you capture them, stuffing them full of stuffing and then putting them on the mantelpiece. Yeah, the, uh, someone who is a cryptid hunter also shouldn't be a regular hunter. <laughs> it shouldn't be a colonel in the army. Because I think being a cryptid hunter is hunting for the truth and evidence of the existence of the creature, not trying to put a bullet in the back of its head and turn it into a rug. I know. I don't want to psychoanalyze Colonel Lionel uh, too hard, but there does seem to be a vibe, doesn't there, right, of these, like, whether it's Colonel Lionel or other people we've investigated over the years, or, you know, even to a lesser extent, you know, Neil Armstrong. It's like these guys who, like Neil, went to space, explored the frontiers of, of space, or Lionel, who was a war hero in World War II, apparently. It's almost like they get back to civilian life and they're like, I mean, we've talked about it before. It's the hashtag next mission. Right. What is the next mission? Uh, you kind of get the sense that this guy, he's wearing a beret. He's got like a army coat on. The war's over, buddy. Yeah. He's, you don't need to drop bombs in a lake anymore. Like, I don't doubt that he's sinking pints at the pub afterwards and like having a good time. But yeah, he definitely is like, where did he get dynamite? <laughs> why? <laughs> if he's just a civilian, why does he have dynamite? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm not surprised that he didn't find anything. Well, I'm not surprised Lionel came to Ireland because this is where cryptid cases can be fascinating because not only is it, as I say, scientifically possible for there to be a beast 
We've already seen the stranded species who've survived the ages and the depth and size of the lake. And there have been countless sightings of water beasts. There is also already mythology throughout Ireland pointing to creatures just like this. Now, while there are lots of different ones, uh, there is a tale in this exact area of an ancient and gargantuan sea serpent. Ooh, sea serpent. The pest is a worm or serpent said to have actually carved one of the lakes in the Black Valley through sheer force of strength. Damn. One of the mountains that overlooks this area has a high point called Krokna Pest, or the Peak of the Serpent. That is kind of mad, isn't it? How big is this mother <laughs> supposed to be? He carved a mountain? I think this is insanely cool. This is the stuff that I really love when it really tells us a lot about the paranormal, the hunt for the paranormal, the discussion about the paranormal, because it frames it as saying, this isn't a new thing. Like, right. if we're discussing it, if we're reading blogs about it, looking at photos and videos, this is just continuing probably a conversation that's been happening for a long time. Yeah, I would say, you know, when we're entering a territory where we're talking about ancient beasts carving lakes and mountains, we're definitely entering the realm of folklore, mythology, very old school belief systems rather than it being a genuine belief that a creature like this physically existed in our world. But doesn't it become interesting when we already have the folklore and then fish scientists say, we saw a 27 <laughs> foot long beast in the lake. Right. Not that big. If the, this is the fish that was supposed to have carved a mountain. Really you not know, that large. They were always <laughs> exaggerating shit back in the day. Um, you make a great point that it is folklore. Yeah. To, to that, here's what I will say. And I'm not, this isn't a defense for Mucky or this particular serpent, but just something I was reading and thinking about recently, which I found so cool and fascinating. I can't wait for us to do more cases on uh, Australia. Of course. Because um, I think it's something we haven't tapped into enough. I mean, obviously we ignored it for a long time because we thought it wasn't real. But now that we know it is real. Uh, Allegedly. There's a really fascinating thing to do with, just in the same way that when we look at uh, Native American stories in North America tell of uh, amazing paranormal folklore. They have the same thing in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture in Australia. They have amazing stories. The difference is maybe between them and in Ireland, or maybe it's not, maybe it is the same, is that in Australia they have this thing called the dream time, right? The, mm. the dreaming. And this is like the big word for... Nap I'm sorry, time. It's not, no. Uh, it's a time at about 3.30, 4.30. No. If you've had a big lunch... If you would let me finish. Sorry. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher it for the Australian listeners, but very broadly, this is like a combination of their folklore, their creation myth, and their just lore right. in general. But it's not something in the past. It's something present and living and breathing and now. They tell stories of amazing creatures that lived in the land, spirits that inhabited places, rocks, uh, trees, etc. Stories that we would be tempted to just put down to mere myth, mere folklore, the same way we do in this part of the world. The difference is the Aboriginal Australian people, they have been there for 65,000 years. And the coolest thing of all is their stories Talk about animals that went extinct 30,000 years ago, 20,000 years ago. Ah. There was all these different megafauna, giant sloths, kangaroos the size of skyscrapers uh, by all accounts, <laughs> but amazing creatures that aren't around anymore. Animals that we would believe to just be a myth, just a story. Right. But they have remembered through their oral tradition for thousands of years, uh, through these stories. You're like, amazing and beautiful animals that we ate into oblivion. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Most of the pictures and, and symbols of these once magnificent creatures are now seen in cookbooks from the ancient societies. <laughs> 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 they were among the most delicious of all the animals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we look at cave paintings and they've got like, yeah, a giant sloth on a spit roast. It's like, oh dear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I bring this up not as some kind of proof that Mucky or one of these sea serpents is there now. Right. But I feel that there's something going on there. Uh, Ireland is also an oral tradition. How can you have 
uh, these ancient stories, the names of the mountains named after a sea serpent, and then through to the modern day, tales of serpents living in the lakes, even sightings. Um, damn, if there isn't something there now, it seems like there was a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of true to every location on Earth. There may not be a dinosaur there right now, but there was at one point, most likely. <laughs> well, right, but also within humans' lifespan. Because yes. humans no, have only dinosaurs. been around for like tens of thousands of years or whatever. Yes. Dinosaurs should have all died millions of years ago. I feel like, yeah, well, definitely not dinosaurs. There probably any more dinosaurs kicking about. You did bring something up earlier, which is worth mentioning, uh, and I didn't realize this, but just how connected these lakes and waterways are. You guys know, it rains a lot in Ireland. Some days, the whole country is just one big puddle. Oh, yeah. You know how you can tell it's summer in Ireland? The rain is warmer. <laughs> that wasn't a diss to the any of our Irish listeners, <laughs> by the way. Of course, listening. it rains everywhere. Is what I'm saying. So don't. It, that wasn't an insult. To keep, keep listening, please. The lakes aren't isolated. The Shannon River is the longest river in the UK and Ireland, and it connects to many other waterways and channels. I believe this came up in the Loch Ness investigation too. We were like, I think this guy is like commuting. I think <laughs> the Loch Ness monster is commuting from Loch Ness to other places and back. Um, <laughs> could be another way in which a, a beast would uh, remain undetected for so long as it travels between places. I mean, that would be a way he would very much become detected. <laughs> if all of a sudden he's swimming beside you while on the motorway. So while the investigation has been frustrating, throwing up tons of testimony and even some footage of a potential beast, like Lionel Leslie himself, we're finishing shorthanded, despite sightings all around the country and dozens of witnesses over the years and the existence of a water beast in Loch Ness, we just can't seem to pin down Mucky. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, a lot of today's case wasn't about Mucky, which was a it twist. Was. Which was a twist I wasn't expecting. It was. It was. <laughs> just, a, just a weird idea to be like, today we're investigating a creature buried deep underwater. To find out more, we're going into the jungle. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, that seems very different. Mucky <laughs> is the pest. The pest. The ancient sea beast is mucky. They're one and the same. Is that a popular belief or is that a theory you're That's trying to establish? That's my personal okay. belief. The Loch Ness Monster and Mucky are cousins. Okay. So the, the legendary creature that was big enough to shape mountains on the face of the earth now lives in a puddle in Ireland. Is his great, 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 great grandson. It's not the same one. Okay. That, that would be crazy. It'd be He's millions gone. of years old. Yeah, it's called Loch Lean because he really shedded some of that weight right. from his prehistoric days. Yeah. He's, he's prepping for a role. Rory, I've taken you on a bit of a journey. Uh, one we haven't done in a little while of looking at a water beast, a sea serpent. Well, a lake serpent. Uh, where's your head at? You know, we've been down this road so many times, honestly, and I think it's it's always the same problem we come up against is, uh, come on, guys. Come on. You, come on. You have, you haven't even tried. You haven't even tried. You woke up on the wrong side of the bed. <laughs> no, 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 no. And no. you haven't even tried. No. You were pissed off from the beginning <laughs> of this story. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you're looking for a creature in the jungle and you can't find him, fair play. Jungles? Kind of you said the opposite earlier. You <laughs> yeah. said you can simply walk around and if you don't see him, he ain't there. No, no, no. I've changed my... Changed, this is changed bullshit. My this is, whatever you were about to metaphor. say is cap. You're speaking Capanese. Jungles are huge. And when the jungles end, there's just fields and it just goes forever. That's the earth, right? If, if you're looking for a creature that lives in a lake, there's only one place he can be and that's in the lake. Oh yeah, and by that logic, we would have explored all of the world's oceans. Oh wait! Scientists say we haven't discovered precisely jack shit of what's in the ocean because it's actually really hard. <laughs> okay, so you said, scientists said we haven't examined precisely jack shit? Yeah, so you know what I mean. We, we, okay, all right. Yeah, well, well the, 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 we're not dealing with an ocean beast here. We're dealing with a lake beast, a lake that I, I think you said is 200 feet deep. Fine. That's, I guess that's pretty deep. I could throw a stone to the other deep. side. You couldn't. So it's not that wide. You're pretty good at baseball, but even you couldn't. So I'm just saying if in a hundred years we haven't been able to snap a pick of this guy, I'm a little suspicious. I actually do have a pick. Do you want to see it? 
Yeah, sure. And it's so worrying that you <laughs> tried to end the episode without bringing it up. <laughs> Feast your eyes! <laughs> when was this taken? Who took this? And why did you almost not show it to me? What do you think of it? I think it's weird. It's so hard to tell what's going on here. I, I, I see the lake water. There's mountains in the background. And then there is just an incredibly, suspiciously black blob protruding from the water. That's not a blob. That's a Loch Ness Monster. Mucky, in this case. So not the Loch Ness it Monster. It is mucky. It's mucky. <laughs> it's muck cross lake. It's mucky. So, what I'm saying is it looks like the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> okay. That's mucky. We got a yes. When was that taken? And who took it? It was taken in 1981. Okay. It is one of the more well-known photos of Maki. It was taken by a known hoaxer. Uh, okay. He actually was so known, he got his ears cut off in Prague for defrauding people. Okay. All right. I can see Which now why, why you didn't want Which is why I didn't put it, it in the episode, <laughs> because I wanted to focus on the legit stuff like the video. Remember, the video was pretty good. The video was okay. The video was okay. Oh my yeah. god, tough crowd. All right. Wow. It's a tough one. Hey, look, cryptid cases are one of the hardest to prove because we do need some physical, tangible evidence at the end of the cases. Um, otherwise, the cases have to be incredibly strong like a with a lot of testimonies. Like a torpedo so, the water. without that evidence, fortunately, it's going to be a no from me this week. Sorry to say. Kid is devastated. I wish you could see the look on his face right now. So I just want, just to be clear. Well, we're not getting any Irish listeners. I feel <laughs> that much is clear. I feel like it would be dangerous to align yourself with the World War II captain who also believes and wants to flood the lake with dynamite and catch all the fish in a big net. That's not a good teammate to have in this argument. Uh, I do have a soft spot for this story, clearly. Um, and I do get excited when there's, when there's tales of a serpent coming from so many different angles. Um, and listen, I'm buoyed. I'm buoyed, to use a water pun, uh, from the <laughs> existence of, we've confirmed on this podcast, two, two at least to my knowledge, sea serpents, well, lake serpents, the Ogopogo and the Loch Ness Monster. First so one am might I, have been I, so, Am I so wrong to give this thing a chance? Because there's been evidence for those, they turn out to exist that if we get some evidence for this and there's enough people talking about it, that this feels like it could be a shoe in It's only a couple hundred miles away from Loch Ness. But I do have to concede that we are missing the silver bullet that was the Ogopogo final video. Yeah. Yeah. We've, had, we've had some incredible um, sea beast cases that unfortunately have come down on a no just because we're missing that final piece of the puzzle. You thought this was incredible too? I thought it I have definitely had some interesting moments and themes. Yeah, and that's all I'll say about that. All right. All right, well, seeing as you're being pretty nice about it, I guess I can give it a no. Uh, right. So it's a double no today. Uh, unfortunately, we're missing that last key bit of evidence. Hope you enjoyed the investigation, though, into Mucky. Hopefully we'll get another real sea serpent on our hands. Or, you know, if you live near here, do us a favor. Make a homemade bomb. <laughs> uh, no. Put it in the water. Do not do that. I think even just saying that on a podcast is huh? probably a bad idea. Um, to get the sea serpent, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not for any other reason. Okay, not a bomb then. Just uh, like splash about a bit. Splash about. I think the lo logic was solid. Make a bit of fuss, make a bit of noise. Yeah. Splash about. He shouldn't eat you, I wouldn't think, even though a few people have gone missing from the lakeside. Um, and try and drive him out. Move around, flop around like an injured seal. Drop a few little drops of fish blood in the water mm. and he'll come he will come and if you have any of your own insights or thoughts on this one send them through this paranormal life podcast at gmail.com i think i put so much bad stuff in my body i think if any animal ate me they would die <laughs> right <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> well we've already established that our drinking water is filled of shit <laughs> so we are poisoned now Right, which is worrying because I think 60% of your human body is water. <laughs> and I was already full of shit. <laughs> so. I'm 100% of a gobshite. <laughs> but guys, if you couldn't get enough of this paranormal life this week, if you're fiending for more, maybe I've left you teased 
on the edge of your seat for a double yes for a sea serpent. Rory, let's drop in a goddamn clip of the Ogo Pogo episode right here so the good people at home can check out a little bit of a Patreon episode, see what they're getting in for, and maybe they would want to check it out. Great idea. Roll the clip. I'm going to go on record and say that was some of the most convincing evidence <laughs> I've ever seen in any episode of This Paranormal Life. <laughs> <laughs> this is wasted on a bonus episode. I'm ready to swear down right now that this mother is real. We saw it. We saw it with our own eyes. <laughs> I mean, that's just, that's about as real as it can get. It's like, we have a footage where we caught him on camera. <laughs> Folks, it's real. I just saw it in a lake. Unless they built a giant animatronic f***ing snake machine for this TV show, then I don't know what else I just witnessed. Humps. We just saw humps moving through like a giant, like God. It was Godzilla. It was Godzilla, folks, living inside this lake. Truly, the the only <laughs> possible alternative explanation is a high level hoax. Yeah, like I said, a uh, in Universal Studios level Jurassic Park ride animatronic sea monster, which is not impossible. But when you start to put it all together with the other sightings and when you look back to you know the what was that thing <laughs> the mid 1800s I'm, I, am, I am shook right now i'm genuinely shook it's quite there's something quite funny about waiting till this late in the episode to show you that yeah, it's like after all, with we've that. Been through. <laughs> oh my god like i was like telling you all about how to pronounce it in the na <laughs> local native american dialect we need to stop global warming. This thing needs to be able to live wherever it wants. Because if we if it runs out of water, it might start eating people. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh, we crack ourselves up. That is patreon.com forward slash this, this paranormal, paranormal life. life. Where you can get a bunch of other rewards too. We've got after party episodes every goddamn week. That is double the TPL coming out every single week. Whoa! Uh, monthly bonus episodes, limited edition, golden coins. Holy shit. And of course, at the end of episodes, we like to give a little shout out to those who are supporting us on the shout out tier. You forgot about the secret tier I added over the weekend. Why would I know about it then? Well, because I thought you kept a, a eye on the Patreon and kind of the updates and stuff like that. You but if you it, don't know about it, 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 secret. well, it was secret that I did it. It should be very public knowledge now because it is made national news. Really? For the small fee of $1,500 a week, I will cut the brakes on whatever car you ask me okay. to. No questions asked. I'll just do it. Really, the less I know about the car, the better. So, you know, keep it vague. Keep, just say... You'll kill somebody. Just say... No, not necessarily. You're I don't hit, know what happened. You're a hitman. So just say, red car, that street. And mm. I'll just snippy, snippy, snip every, the, every okay, single so red car. Okay, you'll kill a lot of people. Well, right. I, that way, I don't know who died because of me and who just just crashed. They're all because of you. <laughs> we don't they know wouldn't that. Have crashed. Statistically, Technically. they wouldn't have crashed. So, just coincidentally. Check out the Patreon. Right. You go, go on the snip snip tier and die for the slow for a very small price. We'll uh, perform. Set that up your deed. own Patreon. I, did, I just think don't lump that in. It seems to have no relevance to the podcast. So it, it just kind of fits. Like, so it's kind of like you know, if you like the show, really you can get that. more of it. If you have enemies, I'll kill them. You just said two non sequiturs. Sorry, one after. I'll cut the. I'll cut. Don't cut the that. wires. Sorry. I'm mixing this it up now because you're, you're getting me stressed. Uh, it's just our legal fees yeah. is all the Patreon every month. <laughs> and some. <laughs> just to keep the lawyer yeah, on. on retainer. Yeah, he actually advised me not to talk about the we tier. We got the guy who got OJ off. So check out the tier. Check out all the tiers. They're all equally good. Sure. Special thank you to Shane Lukic. Oh, Luke. It's Shane. <laughs> oh, Luke. Luke, it's Shane over there. Hey, Shane, how's it going, buddy? We are looking at Shane quarter of a mile away through a 100x <laughs> magnified digital video camera. The I'm looking, oh, it's a duck. It's a duck. Oh, yeah, I was God. just going to say. Yeah. yeah, I thought he was, was doing the water. We should have known that. Yeah. Thanks to Tyler Flaspolar. Tyler, for a very small fee, I'll go under the tires and cut a couple wires. So check out that. I know you're on a certain yeah, shout out tier, but for the small price of, uh, what did I say, fifteen hundred? Don't encourage it. A week, you can just anyone, any for whoever. For how long? Fifteen hundred a week for how long? 
Once you've done the job. Once I've done the job and I do not move fast. I do not move quickly. I move whenever I want and sometimes I don't even do the job at all. Yeah, okay. Sometimes, midway through the call, I snip snip the telephone wire. Just to, just to make sure that you can't get any of my information. I shouldn't be telling you this, Tyler, because I feel like you're maybe not going to pay me to do the job now. So I think, you, I, yeah, I think you've lost that lead. I will. I will do it if I feel like it. Thanks to Chris. We heard about the sea serpent pished. Well, this is crished. <laughs> it wasn't pished. <laughs> it was pished. Pished. Well, this is crished. It's kind of pished, yeah. It is kind of pished. Well, this is, this is crished. And he didn't carve the mountains, but he did carve some pretty cool other things. Well, Christ, Christ, Christ did a, yeah, did a Christ. lot of cool things. Christ. Turned water into wine. Not for Jesus, Christ, Christ, Christ. Oh, the, they're our supporter on Patreon. Uh, they carve things out of marble, ah, so it's kind of like carving right. mountains, but it's like smaller and way more erotic. Oh wow! They they should think about doing it with crystal. Oh, that would be nice, Chris, crystal. It's, it's nice. So but sorry, it, said it was erotic. It's very, it's extremely okay. erotic. Yeah, marble honkers. Thanks to Richard Field. Richard, I hate to tell you, but you failed. Oh no, failed what? His driving test. I hate to tell you. Hate to, I, I, I hate to break it to you. I hate to break it to you, but someone's got to tell you. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I think he um, something went wrong at that uh, downhill portion where the brakes didn't work. <laughs> If you catch my drift. Oh no. God. And he did, who ca- pay- he who did do you catch work a drift. For? He do- caught quite a big drift, actually. <laughs> Around the corners and off into a lake. <laughs> Thanks to Brittany Robinson. They call her Litany Brittany because she's always got a litany of offenses on her record. Uh oh. Yeah. We know a good lawyer. Kind if of you need just, them. yeah, just kind of, they're expensive though. Uh, just kind of racking up offenses charges faster than she can beat them oh my god you know what she, like cr- she'll, what, she'll she'll get off like petty theft and by the time they've got her off, like the lawyers like congratulations you're free she's like not really while you were getting me off i stole the judge's dog <laughs> and then she's back she's never out of the dock does does theft scale are there terms for the scaling of theft you, know, you have like petty theft and then what's, yeah how does i think it that's scale? the name of the game grand theft auto Grand theft. Yeah. 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 So oh, it does. Yeah. yeah it does. It does There's scale. a difference okay. whether you steal the crown jewels versus. I want to know what the biggest. Vape pen. What's the biggest theft? Cosmic theft. You know what? This has got to be something really cool. Oh. Galactic theft. That's what I want to go down for. Not all this break cut and shit. <laughs> Maybe episode theft because you stole this double yes from my, from my Yikes. class today. Well, I didn't steal too hard because we didn't even get one. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly today to Benjamin Bask. Benjamin was hoping to bask in the glory of another double yes, but unfortunately, as Kit said, I stole it this week. He went for the slam dunk and I slapped it out of his hands. Shut down. Um, so I'm sorry, Benjamin. Hopefully next week, if you're tuning in, we'll be able to deliver you that elusive double yes. Sorry, Benjamin. It's been real. Thank you so much for tuning into this Paranormal Life this Tuesday. We, of course, are cooking up the next batch of nonsense for you next week. We'll be back, of course, on Friday with the after party over on patreon.com forward slash this paranormal life and later in the month with the bonus episode. But Rory, until then, I say remember to live fast, investigate, investigate and die young, baby! baby.